morning. Um, this is uh, your town manager. I'm sure most of you recognize me. Uh, this is the number five, I think, I've done of this quarterly report. Uh, and I struggled real quite a bit to come up with the list of things that I wanted to talk about and make sure everybody was aware of. And the more I wrote down, the more things I realized that we're doing, that it would be good to have the public uh, know um, that their municipal government is a very busy place, even in, as we head into the winter months, besides plowing. Um, we're very, very busy. Um, I'll, I'll start with the water department, which is a pretty uh, touchy subject with some. Um, but the water department, under the direction of their new uh, uh, director of uh, public works and water utilities, Jody uh, Gigan, um, is, is a very busy place. They're doing uh, quite a bit of work. But what we've done uh, to try to improve the quality of the water, uh, we have added a mixing machine into the standpipe, um, which keeps the water uh, moving. So all the chemicals that we add to it um, continues to mix so there's a consistency. They test it on a regular basis and it has made some great uh, consistency with what uh, I think will help improve the water quality that we're using right now. Second, uh, they've gone through and they're talk, uh, replacing hydrants that aren't working uh, and we're fixing the ones they can. We've replaced uh, six hydrants and uh, they're ordering six more. So when they have um, hydrants that go down, they can quickly replace them so the fire service has what they need and then they can take it back and uh, repair it, which all the repair work will be done at the public works garage um, by our own employees. Uh, so these are things that we uh, are pretty standard operating procedures, but uh, it's good that you be aware of that because of where we've been and where we're trying to go with our water quality. Um, also, um, we uh, are uh, going to be doing our own uh, hydrant cleaning for, during the winter. We had been contracting it out and uh, we're going, we are going to purchase a snowblower so uh, several of the employees can go around and clean out the hydrants. And, and if the public, if, if you have a hydrant near your home and, and, you, ha and you can do this, it would be very helpful uh, to us and to the fire department to go out, get, out, get right out there and shovel and, and just clean it out so they, people can get into it to hook a hose onto it. That would be really great because uh, we have over a hundred hydrants that we have to clean and we try to do it all in uh, one day or two uh, and it's sometimes as you know when the storms get pretty heavy it it's, takes a lot of time. So that's where we are with that particular end of things. Uh, on a new uh, project that we started working on with Wright Pierce is trying to find another uh, source of water that doesn't have the uh, mineral content that uh, we've been trying to control, which is the manganese and iron uh, in the uh, Salmon Falls River. And what they've done is uh, the, their geologist, uh, Greg, has uh, done quite a bit of research and he found quite a few aquifers throughout uh, Berwick, especially along the river area and other parts of uh, Berwick. And they identified uh, sites which they thought might have the, uh, the volume and the quality uh, that we're looking for, uh, which we require um, 300 gallons a minute to, in order to provide enough water for the 900 plus uh, customers we have. And also we'll check the water quality. So they identified these sites on the map and I re did the research to find out who, who are the owners of these uh, properties and I sent them all letters asking if they would uh, give us permission to go onto their property and, and look at the sites uh, uh, firsthand and see if it might be something that is conducive to doing some test wells. Um, and believe it or not, out of the 15 sites that they identified, I have had eight people call me who are willing to allow uh, Wright Pierce to go on site to do a little work research on their property. And uh, so we're very excited about that. Wright Pierce can't believe we have this many people who are willing to allow this to, to us to do this search. 
which I think is, just speaks highly of the people in Berwick. Um, so of those eight people, I just had to send out forms for the, the, that they fill out. Uh, and we provide the company that will come in will have liability insurance and, and will take care of uh, their property, making sure we don't make a mess or anything like that. So that's moving forward, and I think uh, I'm very hopeful, and so are the engineers, that some of the aquifers that we have in Berwick are very, very good and should have the volume of water and quality of water without the manganese levels uh, and iron that we are used to. Uh, so that, that's where we are. Um, I, I think we're making progress. It, it is slow, um, but I think we want to make sure we do things right. And, um, and this group, White Pierce, uh, will do that. And that will be spearheaded by Jody, our, our, our director of that department. So the other topic while we're talking about public works and utilities is the paving that we did this year. We did quite a bit of paving. Some of it was reclaimed work, some of it was uh, covering over a travel layer that we had previously done. We fund uh, annually at 600,000. Uh, it doesn't get us very far sometimes, as much as I'd like, uh, but we are making progress. Um, and hopefully next year, Jody and, and uh, Robert Pershey, our foreman, and myself are sitting down and going through our uh, program of uh, 20, 10 to 20 year road program that I had put together. And we're making some changes because each year we don't quite have enough money to do all the roads that we would like to do. So we have to uh, just edit it a bit and, and for the following year. So I'm hoping that uh, we'll see Long Swamp and Little River Road, which are very highly traveled roads and are really in rough shape. We did one very bad section this year, which was needed. Uh, but we're hoping to come back and look at that and do what they call a shim and overlay, that, uh, whereas the pavement is okay uh, and will hold up. So that's where we are with roads. Uh, we'll see a schedule coming out probably uh, during the budget process, and hopefully uh, we'll again have another 600,000 uh, available, if not more. Uh, the board of selectmen are very supportive of that. They want that infrastructure uh, to stay on track, and, and I think we're doing that. The other topic that we, I want to talk about is, is uh, bridges. We have two bridges in town, the one on Ridland Road and, and one on uh, Diamond Hill. They were both built in the 50s or 60s, so they're 40 plus years old. They're concrete base, uh, and then uh, the structure underneath is, is all rocks piled up uh, that were probably there from previous bridges. Um, and the state has an inspection process they do every year and they, uh, on certain bridges. And of course, these two come up. And they uh, highly recommend that we plan to replace these bridges. Um, and so we have been doing that for the last few years. And, uh, and they lit a fire under me a little bit more this past year because on the Ridland Road Bridge, we had a 25 ton maximum uh, for traveling over that. And this last year's inspection, uh, they wanted us to, dry, uh, to drop that uh, tonnage down to five tons. That's an area in town that's growing quickly. There's a lot of building going on. It's a highly traveled road. So we contracted with a company called Calderwood Engineering. Uh, they gave us an extremely good price to start the design work. Um, we, uh, with the state, that construction project, it's a 50-50 split. Uh, the estimates so far of what I have had uh, when I first came was about 600,000 to, to replace that bridge, and then it would be 600,000 to replace the Ridland Road Bridge. The Ridland Road Bridge isn't as big a priority because it, it's a little bit better shape, I guess, structurally than Diamond Hill, but it also doesn't get the kind of traffic that uh, the Diamond Hill Road Bridge gets. So we're hoping that they're working on the design. I just spoke with them yesterday. They had some questions. Um, so um, we're hoping, uh, it, again, it will depend if the state actually has matching funds. They will pay 50% of it. So we're looking at a $300,000 cost to, to the community. Uh, but the, that's an investment that lasts, will last many, many years. And we are looking at typical structural steel and concrete 
But we also are looking at alternative uh, materials. Uh, they're doing that out of uh, University of Maine in, uh, in Orono. And I wanted them to take a look at that and see if we could use alternative materials that will give us a little bit longer life. Uh, so just so everybody's aware, we, we haven't ignored them. We did close down. Every winter, we closed down the Ridland Road Bridge because we don't plow it. And uh, we're debating whether we're going to open it up in the spring again. But it will depend on the bridge inspection, which will be done hopefully in the spring. Um, and it'll give us a better idea of, of what condition that is in. But we're hoping that we'll be able to move forward on the Diamond Hill Bridge um, if we can find the money and the state has the money. Um, and while we're talking about public works, one thing to keep in mind is it is winter, and I'm sure you're all aware of that now. It's pretty cold and we've got some snow on the ground. Uh, the parking ban is in place. And it goes from November 15th to uh, April 15th, 12 a.m. midnight to 6 a.m. in the morning. Uh, just be aware of the trucks out on the road plowing. And if and you need to get your car off the road, please take care of that because uh, it's a safety factor for not just you, but also for the plow drivers. And they do a good job for us. Thank you. Public Works is their extremely busy group. Water department is very, very busy, which is good, staying on top of improvements. Um, so uh, what else are we doing? Well, we've been, uh, the Board of Selectmen here have been talking about solar power for many years. I've mentioned it during my meetings. Um, we've been talking with a number of solar providers. Um, it is a very interesting uh, change in, in energy. Uh, what's happening in Maine is a lot of solar farms, and, and these companies are talking to municipalities about getting involved with the solar farms. I'm not sure that's the answer. So we're just getting conversations with different companies and getting proposals and doing a, a very thorough analysis and also talking with legal counsel. We have Bernstein Shore and they have a, one attorney that all he does is utilities um, and he will be the last person we speak to when we get serious about what we think we should be doing and the, bo and the board gives us authority to, to move forward on it. But it's something that uh, is becoming very popular and the technology is, is at a good place and uh, a lot of municipalities are doing it so we'll ba base it on, on their experiences as well. Um, but that's exciting. Um, if you haven't seen the new fire station, you really need to drive by. It's an absolutely beautiful building, very, very functional, uh, and it'll serve this community for 50 plus years, no question about that. I won't be here at, that, at 50 years, but it would be nice to and see it still operating. Um, so take a look. They will have an open house eventually. Uh, if you go online, BCTV did a fabulous job doing a interview showing the building uh, from the beginning. It's, it's very neat to see where the site was with the Esterbrook School and tearing down and the whole timeline of it being built is exciting to watch. Um, and you'll be seeing that as well with the, with the uh, prime tanning site. Um, with the old fire station, we've had a lot of interest because we've mentioned that we might sell it. Uh, we have a Warren article on our January 5th uh, special town meeting, so please show up. It gives the Board of Selectmen permission to uh, get rid of that property. Um, and they have had several people who have asked about leasing it from us, and the Board wants to wash their hands of it. It has a lot of structural issues, which everybody who looks at it is aware, um, and the investment would be uh, considerable for anybody who's going to do the work, but they still don't seem to mind. So we're, we're hopeful that that will pass and, and that will be put on the warrant every year in June from moving forward to give permission to the Board of Selectmen to make decisions on property that we don't have any use for anymore. Uh, talking about the old station again, it's on the January 5th uh, special town meeting warrant. You are still going to be able to do absentee ballots uh, and you check with Patty when those will be ready. The board approved the last change we made in the Warren article last night. Uh, after talking with legal, we made some language changes, but it w they will be available at the town office, and or we could mail them out to you uh, so you can get your absentee ballots and, and vote. Um, right now, uh, the, the station is assessed at around 600 plus or minus 1,000. 
Uh, we had a complete uh, uh, evaluation done by an outside agency, and the, and the value came in pretty darn close to what we, our assessors have it valued at. So uh, that will go towards paying off uh, some of the bond uh, this coming year uh, t towards our new station. So we'd, that's, we all think that's appropriate to, to use that funding for that. Um, that's it for about uh, what's going on within our municipal government. Department heads are starting their budgets. They're getting their sheets next week uh, for the 21-22 fiscal year. Um, it is going to be challenging. Uh, we have contracts that we have to abide by that were done before the pandemic, so there will be some increases in wages, as uh, I'm sure the board will approve to have some increases as well to the non-union employees. But uh, we do our best to keep our uh, capital needs uh, down, so, uh, but still move forward on things that we find to be essential, like paving. Um, one other thing that's coming is uh, Great Falls Construction. The, they are the owners now of the prime tanning site, um, the big lot, eight acres. Um, they will be doing another forum on December uh, 15th at 10 a.m. on their BCT network. So please uh, log in to see, watch that. Uh, they, have, they will be showing us, again, their master plan. They may have made some changes, but they also will be talking about um, the renditions, I think they have renditions that they'll be providing to look what the buildings might be, look like physically. Uh, I have not seen it. The only people who seem to get a preview is James Bellissimo, our planner, who's kind of heading up that, with, working with them. Um, but we're very excited and they're very excited. Um, they're talking about 10 or $15 million investment over the next five or six years. Um, that's a lot of money, but they, in the end, they're talking about having a final number between 50 and 60 million will be the total investment when they're done. That's huge for this community. And it not only from a tax perspective, but also just the, what it's gonna to provide to the citizens of this community. I, I can't wait to see it. Um, they are going to be coming to the planning board um, on December 17th, that Thursday, next week, so uh, you can watch them uh, do a brief introduction of their project. It will be done by uh, the owners plus uh, Sebago Technics, which is their engineering firm, and I'm not sure if their architect will be there, but they do have an architect on there on, uh, under contract that's helping them with design. So it's very exciting. Um, so tune in to see that. The, the other uh, items that we have coming uh, for municipal, which we've been doing a lot of interviewing, trying to replace our recreation director. And we held off um, this past six months uh, because um, of the pandemic. We, we canceled a lot of our uh, programs for recreation just because it wasn't wise to have people together, and children especially. Uh, so we put off that and we've gone through, we had 60 applicants for this position. And we interviewed uh, we had a committee uh, that interviewed, went through the re uh, resumes, and of the 60, uh, they narrowed it down to six people that they thought they would talk to. Um, I was hoping they'd narrow it down to four, but they had six very good applicants. Um, they interviewed them, they made the recommendations, and then Lisa Vargas, myself, and Lisa Hustis sat down with them and interviewed. We did make an offer to one, um, and that position, he found another position full-time because we had only had it at part-time uh, early uh, fall. So we, again, we went back to our list of people uh, and, and interviewed some more people. And I am very pleased to announce that we've made an offer to Angela O'Connor. She will be in here uh, January 5th, start getting herself uh, deep into the programming and planning for all the activities and more. Um, she came to the interview with her homework done and ideas of based on the programming that we have and things that she thought we, we could do. Uh, she came from Needham, Massachusetts. Uh, prior to that, she had been the rec director for uh, Town of Kenny Bunkport. So some of the people there were familiar, very familiar with her and our uh, finance director, Lisa Vargas, 
actually had her children in a program at Kenny Bunkport. Uh, so she was very excited to see her name on the list because they spoke very highly of her. So we're excited and uh, that hopefully completes my uh, finding of uh, new department heads and, and people. Um, I think we've, we've developed a real good team um, to, for the future and I'm excited. So uh, if you get a chance, just uh, you'll get a chance to see Angela on TV when she gets here and settles in. I'll bring her before the board of selectmen and introduce her to everybody. But we are very excited to have her on board. She's got years of experience and she, in Needham, she was actually doing programming based on the pandemic. Uh, so some kids had, you know, things to do. I don't know specifically what those things were, but I give anybody credit who can develop programs uh, for children during this pandemic because it's, it's amazing what we're going through. But uh, that's all I have for today. Um, thank you very much for listening. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call me. I'm, I return my phone calls and everybody seems surprised when I, I do that. But uh, I, that's what I'm here for, to answer questions for the public. And, uh, and please stay safe. And we all work hard here in the town office to keep everybody coming in and our staff safe. Uh, so wear your masks, practice social distancing, and, and hope that the vaccine gets to us in the next few months. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm.